from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We are live at the Splunk. .com 2015. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. Today, our next guest, David Monahan, Research Director, Security Risk Management at EMA. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. Um, Welcome. Let's Glad analyze the marketplace. <laughs> okay. um, security's hot. <laughs> Give us the update. I mean, what's going on at a high level here? Splunk, obviously, good platform, use cases, security. We're seeing that they have a, a lens into their platform with security. How are they doing vis-a-vis -vis the landscape? Who are the horses on the track? Let's discuss that. Share with us your opinion. Uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of questions all wrapped up into one there. So I think Splunk is doing very well from a general market perspective, especially, uh, of course, they're growing by leaps and bounds. They've got a lot of big name customers. So from that perspective, you know, they're doing very well in the marketplace. Uh, there are a number of other vendors that they're competing with. They're, you know, IBM has solutions out there, R R RSA, uh, Logarithm. Uh, when you start getting down to SIM, you've got LogLogic and, and others out there as well. But, but I think from a, a growth perspective, uh, they're, they're doing very well against the competition. And, and, and I think a lot of it's because they do have a, a wide variety of support options from, from the community. And I, and I mean that in terms of creating applications. So they have their own apps that they've built, uh, like ES now has been upgraded from app to its own module. Uh, but then you also have many, many other uh, security related and created uh, applications in the community that you can you can get for free or you can buy. So that that has really propelled them uh, forward uh, in many aspects from a security standpoint. So let's try to get and separate and squint through the details. Obviously, a vendor like Splunk is one that promotes their products and messages. Um, some vendors actually promote more than they actually have. Not in this case. I'm not saying Splunk's doing that, but no. they, they're fair. They're great. They're great. Great company. Good software. But where, 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 where's the gaps? Where's the gap in, in Splunk? Where, where they need to do the work? They're getting into the business analytics space. Obviously, security. I mean, there's some table stakes there that are pretty high bars to hurdle over. Are they making the grade? Where do they need to work on? What's your, what's your critical analysis of, of Splunk? Well, you know, I, I think the thing that I hear most from a customer perspective in terms of challenges is scoping and scale, right? How much do I need to get from, a, from an underlying hardware and architecture perspective? How do I architect that? That seems to be the, the biggest issue because every environment's a little different. So even though they have a great baseline architecture document, uh, some customers experience some issues in that. So I, so I think that's probably the most difficult aspect from a customer perspective. Uh, in terms of the, the other aspects that you asked about, um, they, I think they're doing a great job from a machine learning and, and analytics perspective. Uh, I actually wrote a paper uh, about their Caspita and Metaphor acquisitions and, and how I kind of saw the, the products evolving and have had a number of conversations with their executive leadership around that. They, they have a great vision in terms of uh, in, in integrating these capabilities with the core product, the enterprise product, as well as creating additional modules that, that customers can purchase that will help them to drill down deeper into specific areas that they need to analyze. And, and so, from, from for example, the, the, the machine logic aspect drills more into time series data, so it's looking at events that happen over time, and then, and then aggregating them, correlating them, and then analyzing, which is the important part, because sims can aggregate, they can normalize, things like that, your average sim, but adding the capability to analyze and determine what's out of range for this particular data set, that's very, very key. And in fact, I've done research recently, a data-driven security research report that, that uh, asks uh, a large set of the market, what are you using this for, how can you use it, and it's very, very popular. It's getting a lot of market share and it's really, really accelerating in terms of growth. Have you done any TAM analysis of just the security portion? What's the TAM just in security? I mean, we were commenting yesterday on our opening segment of how tall can Splunk grow? I mean, meaning they're, they're growing up still, but they're, they're one of the bigger vendors now, and they're doing deals with Cisco, you got Palo Alto Networks right here. Right. So, but the, on the security side, is there a TAM, is it billions, is it limited uh, to them? What do you, what's your take? I really haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. I've, I've got a lot on my plate, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that. My, I think there's a number of uh, other research you firms. You say big. That have, yeah, they're very <laughs> yeah. big, right? And, so, and he's like, it's super exactly. big. Why even size it? It's just yeah. large. No, they're, they're, they're definitely, there's definitely a very large market in this space, but I really couldn't quantify it from my own research. Okay, so my next question is, for the, for the complementary aspect of Splunk, I got to get your take on that. So Splunk's good platform. We heard 
customers say, I want to throw hardware at that. So that's good, Splunk can take more hardware, right, make it go right. faster. 6.3 is faster than the last rev. What's the ecosystem play in the security realm for Splunk? Obviously, they have a partner network now, they have a growing ecosystem. Is there more headroom there, a lot more headroom? And where are the complementary components that bolt around Splunk? We hear Cisco, UCS, we see Palo Alto Networks. Well, and I, I, I think from my perspective, uh, there's a, you know, Splunk is a data aggregator, data analytics tool, right? And it doesn't matter whether it's operations, security, whatever it is, right? That, and that's one of their strengths is the fact that they can work on data no matter where it comes from. So, so, I, so I think the, the, from my perspective, the answer on that is their, their, their ecosystem is really driven by what the particular environment is willing to invest in from their security perspective. Because they'll take endpoint data, they'll take firewall perimeter data, network data, IDS, they'll take packet data at this point. So, so really it comes down to, from my security strategy in my business, what tools do I want to buy to try and protect myself, and then I can leverage Splunk, Splunk to, to give me an additional capability around that data. Because each one of those tools is a silo, right? And that's the problem we have in security, is we've got hundreds of tools that are data silos, but we have very few tools that take that data and will actually take a, you know, pull it across all those silos and then analyze it. We've mentioned SIM before, and, and again, that's where kind of where we started from a from Splunk perspective and, and log aggregation, right, in the, in the early days. Yeah. But, but they've grown well beyond that, and, and they're one of the tools that has been able to take that data and, and utilize it to, to see what's going on from a multi-contextual perspective, right? The more points we have, it's like triangulations on cell phones is a, yeah. is a great analogy. If we're trying to locate someone via cell phone, we need at least three points to make that triangulation happen. Well, Splunk takes enough data that you don't necessarily just have triangulation, you might have whatever the, you know, four, five, six, eight, ten different data points, which significantly reduces our false positive rate, which is another thing that we find is, is uh, from a research perspective, is, is the biggest concern that people have. I, I get information, but it's false positives, what do I do? The next thing is uncorrelated data. That was another big aspect from the research. And so again, by being able to take all these silos of data, put them together at the top, and analyze them, you, you get rid of those two major problems, which are over 80% of our, our respondents you know, voted for those two things as their top two issues. So do you guys do surveys? Yes. And what kind of surveys you guys have done recently? that you can share some uh, highlights. So uh, I mentioned Data Driven Security Reloaded. That's one that I finished up a couple of months ago and I looked at 18 different categories of technology including SIM technologies, security analytics, and security analytics I have user behavior analysis, anomaly detection, and predictive analytics. Those are really the three main categories. And the names flux a little bit between the different uh, analytics vendors, if you will. Uh, additionally, you had security web gateways, data classification, data loss protection. Uh, we also had next generation firewalls, et cetera. So there's a wide variety of, and, and that's just 18 out of literally 100 stacks that we have out there. Uh, and in this particular research, uh, I mentioned that false positives were a big issue. Uh, the ability to correlate data uh, was, was huge. And so th the analytics vendors came out at the top of the stack in terms of a value based on total cost of ownership. The uh, relatively small market share, there's not a lot of organizations that have it yet, but the, but the good news is because there's, there's a really high amount of visibility in the marketplace around analytics and what it can do, and, and so uh, if you're well, familiar- Well the price might be lower too, right? I mean, ROI kicks in, their analytics package sees an insight, they expand on that outlier, Right, it's not a replacement technology, it's an augmentation technology, absolutely. So you don't have to rip and replace something you already have to gain additional value out of the security infrastructure that you already have. And, and we find that's another aspect that customers really like about that. It's not about coming in and taking something out. It's, how, you know, I've spent millions of dollars on this infrastructure. How can I get more out of it without necessarily having to throw more people at it? Okay, in our last couple of minutes here, we got like two minutes left. I want to just get your thoughts on what enabling technologies do you see out there, whether it's through your research, anecdotally, talking to customers and vendors, that will help enable this next generation security uh, I guess perimeterless security, is there any new technology that will impact us? Like, like for instance, virtualization's out there, we heard Docker containers, there's now stuff hitting the scenes on a DevOps basis. Do you, are you seeing anything out there, any signals of new tech that, that looks promising? Um, well, I, I think we've beat the dead horse to some degree with, with analytics, and there's multiple types, and, and we know that they've invested in both uh, machine language, or machine learning, excuse me, and, uh, and analytics from a UBA perspective. Uh, those, those aspects, I think, are one of the biggest growth areas. Uh, absolutely, with containers coming out, we're looking at organizations or companies that can supply security for containers. 
Uh, containers look to be a, a, a very big growth area, but, but now it's the question of how do, I, how do I contain them, right? How do I segment them and how do I keep them together? So the, the companies that can help secure not only virtual environments, but contain, you know, containerized environments are going to be big as well because that's going to be a growth area and it's, and it's cheap for companies to create containers, right? And so they're going to need ways to secure those because they're going to, they're going to be a similar aspect to what we saw with the growth of virtual machine environments yeah. and the expansion around cloud and that kind of thing. So you're going to see a similar expansion around containers and so we're going to need ways to secure those containers well. It's all open source, all the code's really agile, so software has leaks, right? So if there's bad so software, you know, they'll find a hole, pin, we'll find a hole in it, right? Absolutely. Okay, so final question. What are the top three conversations that you're in every day? That, that the pat let's do a little machine learning on our own here. Okay. Top three pattern matching conversations. The ones that you seem to have the most of with uh, practitioners and customers in the market today with respect to security. Um, you know, it's interesting. So I'll say, how do I do more with less? But I don't think it's budgets right now, it's people. Right, budgets seem to be on the incline since all the issues in 2014. Our research shows that there's a lot of attention at the sea level, a lot of budgets, but, but it's how do, I, how do I get more people? How do I improve the people? So we need technologies that are force multipliers. They'll allow us to do more work with either less experienced people or less people in our shop. Because unfortunately what's happening is, the, the, especially in the SMB market and the lower mid markets, they don't have as big a pockets as the larger players do. So the guys with the big pockets are getting the big, tech, uh, uh, big personnel, the big talent, and the other folks are having to uh, you know, work on that talent and develop it. So uh, I, that's one. Uh, two is how do we uh, enable ourselves to get better visibility across our silos? Uh, a lot of folks bought point, point solutions so they could get better depth in the visibility, but now they're realizing, once again, we have to look at how can we combine all that data and, and go back there uh, and analyze it. The, the third one is probably how to detect threats earlier. Right, when we realize that, that certain technology is great and there's a lot of benefits to each technology, but with the dwell times we're seeing from both the Verizon report, for example, and the Mandiant reports, now FireEye, uh, you know, organizations are being compromised in a fairly short period of time, but there's a long dwell time. So they're trying to understand how they can identify those threats earlier to stop that so they're not having a multi-million dollar forensics investigation. Stop the bleeding, if you will. Absolutely. Okay, final, final question to end the segment. What does Splunk need to do in the next year or so in their business model, in their technology, in your opinion as an analyst, to be successful? Um, I'm going to go back to that same dead horse. I think as they continue to, with the acquisitions of their analytics technologies of both types, as they need to continue to integrate that into their core enterprise modules so that people get additional value out of that. And that's one area they get beat up on traditionally was, well, I have to know what I'm looking for. I have to be able to create this query to find something. Well, the whole idea behind analytics is if you tell it to look at a specific data set, it will tell you what the problems are in that data set. So they'll have to continue to integrate that and they'll want to integrate that into their applications and, and, and make them uh, extensible from that perspective so that the other uh, communities as they continue to create these applications can leverage those technologies and, and exponentially increase the value of yeah. those applications. Get early detections and then solve the problems. Absolutely. Really appreciate David Monahan here inside theCUBE, EMA, great analyst from. Thanks for sharing your analyst Absolutely. perspective and analyzing the, the, the data and the horses on the track as we say here in theCUBE. We'll be back with more live coverage, Splunk.conference after this short break. <laughs>